Hi there, photography class. Um, this is the video that I promised to post, just showing you how to do this little, um, little portrait exercise with Photopea, just to help you get a little bit more um, comfortable in it and to uh, make up a little bit for not having Photoshop. So once you get to Photopea.com, I want you to go File. Now I have the photo on my desktop, so I'm just going to hit Open. I'm going to go to my desktop and let's see. Here we go. So I just took a um, sort of screenshot with my webcam. It's not the greatest picture ever, but this is more for the demonstration of the technique. So I'm going to hit open and open it up here. Enter to place it. Now remember what I always say is you must duplicate your background. So we're going to duplicate this layer so that we have a background layer. And I'm also going to create a new layer by clicking on this little um, new layer symbol right here. I'm going to drag it down so I want it on the bottom. Or it's not going to let me. And I'm going to uh, just fill this with white uh, because that's what I want my background to look like. So I'm just going to call it white and go uh, switch that to well, white. And to actually, to fill something automatically, I'm going to turn this off so you can see. So I'm on this background. You can see that you have your white and your black. Uh, black is now primary, white secondary. If you do option or on your uh, Chromebook, that'll be um, alt, alt delete. It'll automatically fill with your top color and command or control delete will automatically fill it with your background color. So I'm going to... Uh, Alt delete to fill that layer there. Um, turn back on this one and we're going to start to work on it. Now, first things first, I actually am going to use a mask to do this um, because I don't want to be destroying my picture or destroying pixels. I could use an eraser tool, but I find that an eraser, if you make a mistake, I don't want you always having to be uh, hitting undo, 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 and possibly losing something if you don't notice it in time. So we're going to be using masks. Um, quickest way to do a mask is just to go down. It looks kind of like a little white square with a black circle or like a grayscale Japanese flag. If you mouse over, it says add raster mask. If you click it once, you'll notice this little chain icon appears here, which means it is linked, and this white box here. So what this link uh, icon means is that this mask, which is what this thing is right here, is linked to this layer. So currently the mask is all white. You'll remember from um, when we were actually back in class that a white mask means that it's telling all the images in your, or all the pixels in your image over here to be fully opaque. But if we paint on it, we're going to switch this to black down here by clicking on that button. Remember that open and close square bracket, just like in Photoshop, change the size of your brush. So you can see, for instance, if I start to paint here, it will actually make those pixels transparent. If I go up to my blend mode here and I change the hardness because I want a, maybe a little softer edge brush so it's not quite so hard of a line there, you can see how it um, will blend it down nicely. So. What we're going to kind of do here is we're going to be attempting to create a front-facing, side-facing Picasso-style portrait. Um, and so I'm going to make my brush a little smaller using the uh, open bracket there. And I'm going to just try to freehand this a little bit. Um, try and find that midpoint of my nose. So right here, we're going to use that sort of ball point right there and then leave this nostril and we're going to kind of start from there and uh, and see how we how it goes but that's what I feel is probably my best bet so I'm going to zoom in here one of the awful things about using a mouse to do this kind of work is it's never going to be quite as clean as you want let's go down there I actually kind of want Two. Yeah, it should be right around there. I'm trying to kind of 
um, think about basically taking my face and splitting it in half. Remember, if you hold on spacebar, it'll give you the move tool so you can kind of scroll around on your image. Go here, draw the image there, and you can think a little bit about shaping my face. And this is just a little bit of artistic interpretation. You can keep on going here. It's beginning to look a little bit like I want it to. A little bit more there. And bring this on here. Remember, the brow be kind of right there. And then my brow slopes a little bit, so that nope, I'm just gonna kind of extract it like that. So I've kind of created the basic shape there that I'm kind of looking for. Um, and let's uh, let's take a look as we zoom out. Remember, if you hold on spacebar, uh, control, option, or just even spacebar, alt. That gets you, allows you to zoom out. If you hold down spacebar, control, you can zoom in. Those are the same uh, hotkeys from before, so remember always spacebar, control. Now I'm just going to go over here. I'll come up in this. And I'm going to go with a bigger brush here. And we're just going to kind of mask this out a little bit as. You'll notice I get it gets smaller when I need more detail and larger when I just want to cover a large area here. So I'll quickly do this. Get in there. See how this looks in the end. And then we'll kind of fix it up using the mask tool to rebuild areas that we think are uh, not particularly uh, how we want them. You can probably see already in my nose how it might not actually work exactly how I want it to, which is fine. It's all about kind of figuring it out. There we go. And we're just going to pause it here for a second. Okay, so if I want to do a little bit of um, adjusting here, making sure that I'm still Using the paintbrush tool, just get rid of that. I'm also going to lighten this up here just to kind of blend it a little bit more. Okay, let's uh, let's first do a crop just to, so we don't have all this white space here. So let's do a crop, kind of have it nicely centered there. There we go. Oh, it's a little cropped it a little large on the edge. Crop tool is this one right here, just in case you missed that when I initially clicked on it. It's also C. Remember to hit enter to accept the crop. This is kind of working there. Um, it might actually have been better if I was looking in this direction, but you can kind of see this looks like a profile. Um, but if I find that, for instance, uh, I don't really like my nose shape and I wanted to change it a bit, what I could do, remember, spacebar is the move around tool. I could go down here, flip uh, that to white, go back to the paintbrush and zoom in here. And, uh, you know, I could, for instance, uh, paint back in a little bit of more of a brow line. Notice I'm still painting on the layer mask. I'm not painting on the actual image with the actual pixels. They're all still there. This is just a mask. Um, because I have a slightly more Neanderthal-like forehead than you might expect. And so I, you know, go in here and just add a little bit there. And maybe really, you know, bring my hair out a little bit more. Give myself some sweet sort of old school swoop there. Kind of like a rockabilly or something. 
Um, okay, there we go. Um, that actually looks remarkably like my own mouth from the side. I think um, I think the big one is having the eye maybe looking that way would have worked a little bit better. Uh, but all in all, it kind of looks like this weird sort of Picasso forward and also side looking portrait. So once you're done and you're kind of happy with how it's gone, you've kind of reshaped it how you think it should go, um, then what I want you to do, you've cropped it so it's kind of nicely framed in the center here. I want you to go to File, um, Export As, and Export As a JPEG. So I just had a small image, but keep the quality up. Um, save. And it will download the photo. So when you hit Save, it actually just downloads it into your Downloads uh, folder. So that's where you're going to have to go find it. So the max, it's your downloads folder is there on your Chromebooks. It's going to be in a slightly different place. But when you hit save with Photopea, that is where your folder, where your photos go. So this is just a really fun, quick little uh, playing around in Photopea. Um, just getting a little bit used to, once again, using masks, um, using the brush tool, uh, doing a little selection, a little bit of cropping. And uh, that's how you do this assignment.